and the Kraken has been released and finally Alpha 19 has been released for experimental build for everyone in the community so if you haven't checked your Steam make sure you go check your Steam and I'm gonna show how to actually well how to install it because you of course you want to play the game right so I'm gonna do a very quick highlight of how to install the game in case you haven't done this before with experimental builds and after that we're gonna take a little bit of a look of some of the things that might have changed in the game from alpha 18 that you might want to take into account as you start playing the game first thing up open your steam then you go to your games or favorites depending on how you have it organized and if it only says seven days to die without the latest experimental when it right click it hit properties and go to the fifth tab the rightmost one that says betas the one you want to have is latest experimental unstable build which is usual at the bottom you probably have if you haven't been updating to experimental you probably have none opt out of all beta programs which will take the latest stable release which is currently 18.4 you can actually change this one you hit close and it will download it if you later on want to go back to alpha 18 you go to the same listing here select alpha 18.4 or potentially opt out and close it and it will download the correct version you might however want to make a backup of your save so go to your start menu type in percentage app data percentage and it should be opening up the correct folder structure open up seven days to die and here there are two things you want to copy generated worlds are the worlds that have been generated by the random world generator and you need this ones in order to play your games your old saves so take a copy of this one just create a folder called backups or something and make a copy inside that's not the actual save it's just the world that you have generated then you want to go into the saves and you want to copy whatever old saves you have in here into a separate folder again put it in a backup folder or something like that that means that you can then clear them out and there won't be any issues when you're trying out alpha 19 experimental because your old worlds and your old saves will be safely copied and backed up into its own folder why this is important is that the Fumpimps always highlight that safest to play new experimental version is to wipe all the generated worlds, all the saves, etc. And of course, if you want to maintain your old ones, make sure you have a backup. Otherwise, you cannot go back and play your old saves. But assuming you've done that, you're good to go. Go start the game. Starting up the game, everything is pretty much identical. What you want to do is go into a new game. And this is where you can select how to create a new game. Now, random world generation has been having some challenges. It's uh, some people complain it crashes or takes a lot of RAM or just takes ages to generate. So one thing you could do is just simply try out the pre-gen 01 to 03 because these are new worlds generated for Alpha 19. And they are random worlds, but they've just been generated up front by the Fumpims and delivered with the build. So that's one way to just start playing without taking too long. The rest of the settings are all the same. What about game options? They are essentially the same. There's some changes to brightness. There's no longer on gamma. So uh, brightness is the way to do it and it looks a lot better, a lot more vibrant. You also have the dynamic resolution mode. What this means is that if you set it like this, there's different way you can have it off, auto or scale. If you do it auto, it means that as it starts to go below 25, fps it will decrease the resolution which means it look worse but at least you maintain some performance going into the audio settings you also have the dynamic music system now this has been a nice upgrade there's a lot more dynamic music so you might want to have this enabled because it actually sounds pretty good except the battle music you can also tweak how much time it has allotted for the day and of course the volume bars one of the things you'll realize very quickly when you spawn is that the colors are really vibrant, which is really nice because they have uh, changed the lighting, which has had a dramatic improvement on all the just the color quality. And that's where the gamma comes in. Now there's no more gamma, there's a brightness, which means that even if you set that to higher brightness, because you want to be able to see something at night, the colors aren't, aren't washed out. There are also a bunch of new assets, new weapons and new zombies. For instance, you have the club that looks and sounds really good. You can bash zombies all day without a nice satisfying thunk. You also have the Iron Club, which is really, really nice. Again, it's an upgraded club, but it feels really nice and hefty as you bash the zombie skulls. In addition is the Stone Sledgehammer. So we used to have an iron and a steel sledgehammer, obviously, but the stone one is really nice. And you can often find that earlier in the game. 
We have the Desert Vulture, which is obviously a ver variation of the Desert Eagle type of weapon, which is really satisfying to use if you're lucky enough to find it. It uses the Magnum ammo and it, of course is an upgrade from the Magnum. The Tactical Assault Rifle, Burst Fire Weapon is really satisfying. It sounds good, it feels good, it handles good, doesn't have as much recoil as the AK-47 and it's an upgrade from it. We have the Heavy Sniper Rifle. Ooh, it sounds really good. It still seems to be a little bit inaccurate. I think the crosshairs are a little bit too big, but it's got really nice damage and it sounds wonderful. We have the Impact Sledge, which doesn't work really well to uh, bash zombies. You actually can do it. I managed to kill zombies with it fairly well using it sort of as a club, but what it's really for is uh, killing cars or vehicles. They're just dismantling things in general faster than the wrench. It's an upgrade to the wrench. And one of the tech tier items that we have, the weapons, is the Junk Sledge. Now you can use this one manually, just uh, fire off the piston and bash zombies, uh, which uh, doesn't really kill them that fast, I have to admit. Or, if you really want to, if you are so inclined, you can set it down and wait, and wait, and wait. And I've turned off the zombies here because obviously waiting this long would actually kill me. It um, is extremely situational. We're going to have to do a bit more deep dive into it. But it seems like it needs a little bit of a buff in order to kill the zombies better. So play-wise, the game feels a lot more solid. But this is very similar to Alpha 18. There are some changes when it comes to the actual skills. What you will notice is that they are... Very similar, but there have been a rebalancing on the amount of perk levels each perk have. So some of them still have five, especially the combat ones, but a lot of the supporting skills like lockpicking, infiltrator, etc. I only have three or maybe four. And you see that's actually a common theme for a lot of the supporting skills that now only have three ranks, sometimes four, in order to make them more useful and more competitive compared to the combat perks. A bunch of new PIs, and the PIs look really good. I'm not gonna spoil it here for you, but you can see, oh, they look so much nicer. And if you peek in just slightly, you'll see shelves that are very different. There's a lot more assets and inject. Oh, there's a new poster that, oh, I haven't seen that one. And you see, it just looks a lot better compared to what they used to. And this is the working stiff tool. And uh, it's absolutely an improvement from before. The zombie AI has changed, so, uh, the wedge tips, the one to uh, let them slide down the slippery slopes, are no longer working the way they did before. This is not going to keep you safe. And there's been a lot of other changes as well. Some small, some large. And uh, the zombie eye is something we're going to have to explore in more detail. But uh, if you were using this as a defense before, it no longer works. In case you use the wedges and the wedge tips as a way to prevent zombies to actually get up to you, well... It doesn't quite work as well as before. It's not 100% fixed, as you can see here. They sort of can jump up there. It's not taken as just a ramp, but they sort of do have to jump up there or slowly walk. So it's not perfect, but it's definitely not as broken as it used to be. Beyond that, looting has been change such that the progression is a lot more gradual so here i found double barrel shotgun and i found a wooden club a pretty high quality though because i'm level 36 but still it's just a wooden club and a double barrel shotgun so this has definitely been changed to slow down the progression of finding weapons no longer going to find pistols and shotguns and rifles and stuff like that on the first day most likely unless you're super super lucky you'll find some other things like clubs and double barrel shotgun or usually blunder buses if you're level one and we finally have an electronic store important for those who are trying to scavenge for electrical resources but that's about it i don't want to spoil more for you if you haven't been watching a lot of the videos so go install alpha 19 experimental and try it out and have some fun and come back and let me know what your initial impressions are see you next time special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel if you would like to join the Vedit community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.